Welcome back, loyal viewer. I'm Dr. Wolfula, your host of this series, attempting to detail the many ways Jason Voorhees has changed throughout the Friday the 13th film series. In this installment, let's continue to see the changes made to Jason in the last four Friday the 13th films of the 1980s. Let's get started, shall we? Jason is dead in part 5, so he makes no appearance in it besides flashbacks and Tommy Jarvis hallucinations. Instead of the J-Man, we're treated to a spoiler alert copycat killer dressing as Jason in order to spook the local kids. Not unlike an episode of Scooby-Doo. The copycat is named Roy Burns, a Crystal Lake paramedic. The reasoning behind Roy's murders is incredibly convoluted and it doesn't really make any sense when explained, so why bother? Even though Roy is trying to make people think that he's Jason, he still tries to set himself apart from the guy he's imitating. Instead of red chevrons on the hockey mask, Roy only has two blue chevrons on his cheeks. Also, Roy wears a blue jumpsuit, the signature attire of Jason's colleague, Michael Myers. You know, instead of the work shirt and slacks that the real Jason wore previously. Other than those details, Roy pretty much was Jason. He even wore an elaborate flesh hood in order to look like the big bald guy. Just think, if Roy didn't die in part 5, we could have gone through like three sequels without ever knowing it was him. Wouldn't that be crazy? Part 5 ended in a way that implied Tommy would carry on with the murders begun with Pamela Voorhees. Apparently that idea wasn't exactly popular, so instead Jason returned in Part 6 through the power of Dr. Frankenstein lightning. Jason Unmasked is only seen briefly exiting his casket, and it's hard to get a good look. It's safe to say that Jason is definitely a living corpse based on his decomposition and his cobweb decoration. In a close-up of his eye, it's clear that Jason definitely needs some proactive to clean up his slimy, worm-eaten complexion. The hockey mask worn by Jason in Part 6 is the same, except it's missing the chevrons on the cheeks. Okay, so they remembered the axe scar, but forgot Jason has three mask chevrons? For the most part, Jason wears the same clothes seen in his earlier flicks, but with a couple of neat inclusions. For one thing, Jason wears a pair of snazzy yellow work gloves that add a little color to his drab appearance. Jason also comes fully equipped with a utility belt that provides him with easier access to his killing tools. So, Jason is pretty much a murderous Batman. You know what? That's pretty damn cool. Action figure Jason. Part 7 shows Jason Voorhees unleashed. I'd even say unchained if he wasn't wearing a chain around his neck. Part 7 totally embraces the idea that Jason is now a zombified Frankenstein monster. The guy retains all the battle damage he probably should have had up to this point. There's an astonishing level of detail put into the character. A decent chunk of Jason's mask is gone, along with a decent chunk of his flesh and clothes. Jason is missing a little bit of everything here, including his mask cheek chevrons again. Unusually, Part 7 places a big emphasis on Jason Unmasked. This is the meanest looking interpretation of Jason. The guy really does look pissed off about something. I mean, if I look like that, I'd want to kill whatever was in proximity to me. Jason has become skeletal in his decayed state. His eyes are sunken, he's lost his nose, his lips are chipping away. One of his eyes is bloodshot, the other eye? Man, he doesn't even have the other eye. Part of Jay's skull is peeking through around his missing eye. Then he's lost a portion of his cheek, revealing some of his pearly whites. Wow, what is keeping this guy together for all these years? Part 8 sees Jason go back to a basic look. Many of the crazy details seen in Part 7 are gone. This time around, the mask is yellow and the chevrons are all back in the right places. They're a little smaller this go-around. Dress-wise, Jason's threads are a ripped-up jumpsuit in addition to the return of gloves, this time black. Controversially, Jason appears in two separate states as a child in Part 8. One of these forms is as a normal-looking kid, the other is a far more familiar-looking appearance as a deformed child. It kind of seems like the makers of Part 8 are implying Jason was made to look messed up because he drowned or whatever. This deformed child Jason has a smaller head and he's all wrinkly. So, old man baby Jason. Living in a lake hasn't been kind to little Jason here. Near the end of the flick, Jason is unmasked and it's sort of disappointing. His face is melting because of toxic waste. The man just looks like some kind of alien creature that doesn't even look like a human. I guess Jason is just supposed to look like a pathetic old monster in agony that wants to die. Kind of an intimidation buzzkill. Well, after Jason took Manhattan, New Line Cinema took him. His film rights, at least. We'll conclude next time with the four Jason films handled by New Line. I'll see you there!